Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sikandar Fik. No, I would like to invite another keynote speaker, Dr. Royal Bilad from University Technology, Petronas, Malaysia. Dr. Bilad has a strong research portfolio on membrane science and technology, as demonstrated by the number of funding and research outputs. He has three EPO patents and more than 100 ISI and Scopus journals. The good track record was developed through experience as working researcher in KU Luvian, Master Institute, and NTU. He completed his PhD from KU Luvian on membrane falling control under the supervision of Prof. Ivo Van Kelicom, and he has been mentored by Prof. Tony Fan when working in NTU. His current research focuses on membrane technology for water and energy, including desalination, water and wastewater treatment, carbon dioxide, and bioresource management. He implements gravity-driven point of use membrane process through community service in rural area. He focused his cur current research on sustainable process by utilizing waste and natural based materials for fabrication of high performance membrane, including module design that minimize intrinsic membrane material potential by facilitating effective control of falling. In addition to that, he is also interested in implementation of Internet of Things by via big data analysis for membrane plant optimization. Finally, developments of novel types of membrane reactors costume to address specific challenge that is high temperature climate are also worthy for exploration. Today, the title of his presentation is Recent Development uh, of Membrane Falling Control in Liquid Based Filtration Using Module and Membrane Induced Hydrodynamic Approaches. So over to you, Dr. Royal Bilan. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, yes we loud can and hear clear. You, please. Okay. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, I will try to keep up my time. I only have about 12 slides. So I uh, changed a little bit the title of my presentation because of the time limitation. I'll be focused more on the uh, module design to uh, control uh, membrane fouling. Uh, so uh, to give an introduction, uh, let's see uh, from the operational pr perspective. Normally membrane uh, process, this is for liquid filtration, is operated at a constant flux system. So what happened is that as time uh, passed by, you start to develop the falling layer on the membrane surface, as you can see here. And then as you continue the filtration, it will reach uh, what we call as a threshold flux, when, when normally at this time you have to uh, stop the uh, operation and perform the cleanings. So uh, this is an example of the real uh, uh, MBR membranes. Uh, this is, uh, you can imagine this is the condition when you start the operation and at the, at the end of this cycle, you will have a fold membrane. So uh, after this uh, condition uh, is attained, uh, the operation must be stopped and the system must be cleaned and then the operation must be restart again. So. Uh, in the operational perspective, um, fouling management then result in a complex cycle of operation. As you can see from this illustration, you can uh, develop a lot of cycles. Uh, first, uh, filtration with relaxation or backwashing. So this is the cycle of short one uh, within 10 to 30 minutes. Uh, then we might probably implement uh, some sort of maintenance chemical cleanings that can be done in one or two weeks. Uh, within that period uh, with a low uh, concentration of cleaning agents. And then from time to time, uh, normally twice a year, uh, depending on the performance of your uh, system, you will probably need to do the uh, intensive cleaning. So, so the operation is complex. And if you want to uh, portray the complexity of operation in the pressure evolution, as you can see here, uh, you see the transmembrane pressure goes up over time. You do the cleaning, uh, go up, cleaning, go up, cleaning, and so on. Uh, and then as a function of time, uh, because of the perm permanent fouling, you will lose the original performance of the membrane and eventually we need to replace uh, the membrane. Okay, uh, this is an example of a uh, few weeks ago, uh, I, I'm in contact with someone that uh, performed the membrane cleaning. So when, when you need the chemical cleanings, you need to stop the operation. Uh, Sometimes you need to take out the membranes and uh, depending on the supplier's uh, uh, guidance, you might need to take out all of the modules. This, this is an example of hollow fiber modules and flush it with clean water before so soak it into the chemical cleanings. So, uh, in the operational 
perspective, uh, falling lead to a complicated oppression, and um, it's one of the main contributor of the uh, energy for uh, membrane oppression. Okay, so how we deal with this one? Uh, we deal this one with many ways. Well, we can manipulate the feed. We can work on developing the membranes like the uh, plenary speaker in the beginning. Or you can play with hydrodynamics, which uh, the one that I'm going to talk uh, uh, today. So I will uh, show to you three approach uh, 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 from the module perspective of how we can improve the uh, hydrodynamics uh, to uh, enhance the uh, filtration performance. Okay, the first approach is using fibrating membranes. This is my, part of my old study. So currently people use air, uh, coarse bubble aeration. So when you use the aeration to score off fouling, it has a few inherent limitation. Okay, air bubble only pro produce weak shear rate. Uh, it's rich plateau means that at one point you cannot uh, improve the, the, the permeability. So uh, by inducing, uh, by pumping air, so you, you, you achieve sort of cleanings. Uh, at one point, it, you cannot clean anymore. So uh, in the context of MBRs, it might also alter the feed condition. As such, it's become falling prone. So, and then you have problem with uh, bubble distribution. So what I did, uh, uh, on my study was like, instead of using the uh, extensive aeration, uh, we, why don't we just fibrate the membrane? So we can then optimize the yield of energy uh, on the membrane surface. It is flexible, which means that we can fibrate it when, when required, because this is an um, uh, electricity driven uh, vibration. Uh, it's a low process control. You can change the uh, vibrating parameters like uh, amplitudes, the frequency and so on. Uh, in demand, if you have a very bad situation where the falling is very high, you can then manipulate the uh, fibrating parameters. Um, so uh, we tested on membrane uh, bioreactors, and then we find out that the system is highly efficient. Uh, as you can see here, if you do implement a full vibration, uh, you achieve almost no resistance, basically no pressure goes up here. If you compare to the no vibration that continuously increasing the uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the resistance. So it is highly efficient. The energy can be minimized if you operate it in the intermittent operation. And we calculate the energy and the energy consumption, consumption is actually very low. Uh, the system is uh, also applicable for a lot of different feeds, as you can see from um, a list of publication we have here. The only problem is that this system is very hard to scale up. So up to this point, although initially we started the work in 2012, we don't have any uh, full-scale or even pilot-scale filtration. Okay. So we come up with a different approach. Uh, we call as a tilted uh, panel system. So when we perform aeration, this is what we think actually happening. So we uh, push, uh, we pump the air bubbles, and the air bubble will uh, score off the membrane falling like this one. So. This is uh, the dream of a researcher, the dream of engineers to clean the membrane. But in the reality, oh, it's not that easy. So because the bubble is very hard to control, it's just uh, only sometime uh, uh, hits the membrane surface and from the cleaning. So it is not efficient. So the state of the art way of aeration, uh, you can see here, this call as, oh, it doesn't work. This is a lead MBR. Uh, this is a lead MBR. Uh, as you can see, they pump a lot of air. You see here, and then uh, for the hollow fiber model, it's allow them to sway and to swings, and uh, and then you can achieve the enhanced cleaning. But the consequences is that if you apply a large amount of air to clean clean off the membranes, you uh, have a high energy consumption. So mainly for coarse bubble aeration, it can go up to 60% of the energy input. So our idea was quite simple. Uh, why don't, instead of having the ver vertical model here, we just tilt the membrane. As such, we force the bubble to travel on the top of the membrane surface. We tested for, uh, this is an MBR application. As you can see here, uh, uh, zero means you have a vertical models. If we tilt it up to, let's say here, it's 20 degrees Celsius, 
you can achieve a significant uh, increment of the permeability. And then even up, up to some point, if you manipulate the aeration, you can uh, reach a, a platy permeance. The platy permeance means that the, the maximum permeability you can achieve where there is no uh, falling in, your, in our systems. So this is good. Uh, and then we can uh, perform uh, some sort of optimization uh, by developing the equation that link between energy and operational parameters to achieve the uh, very low energy consumption. Actually, by implementing this system, it can reduce up to 41% of the energy consumption. Uh, here I list some of the papers we, 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 we publish uh, related to this uh, concept. Okay, lastly, um, so when we apply the, the tilted system, it will require us to um, what we call uh, to switch the side of the tilting. Uh, if we don't switch the side of tilting, means you can only put uh, the membrane on one side of the panel. So uh, then why don't, so I, I met Tony Fain 2018 or 2017, and he mentioned to me, why don't you use spacer? So uh, on the left side here, this is the conventional panel with the vertical alignment of models. Uh, here on the right side, you can see panel with the spacer. So if we put spacer inside, uh, and uh, actually uh, you see here, this is an example of our lab experiments. Uh, we can actually uh, direct the flow of bubble to left side, in this case, because we have one membrane on the left, or to the right side, if you put membrane on the other side. And then we run it in a lab scale experiment for uh, oily wastewater, and we see actually 86% uh, improvement in permeability. We run it for microalgae uh, filtration, and we achieve uh, quite high permeability, close to 900 uh, uh, things. And we try to uh, perform uh, the simulation through CFT, and here you can see how actually the fin spacer we put in the in between the panel. Uh, can direct the flow of the bubble to the membrane surface, as well as induce the secondary flow to the other side to perform the cleaning as well. So it's not like this side static, but actually they are secondary flow that actually uh, help to clean the membrane on the side that is not projected by the membrane. So we have a few works, uh, publication on this. Uh, recently, we published in Bioresource Technology Report on uh, this application. Okay, um, we try to compare what we achieve with this uh, filtration and uh, as you can see here, uh, there are so many different types of way to control falling for microalgae and our result was actually the highest reported in literature with a uh, steady state probability of close to 900 liter per square meter per hour per bar. So in conclusion, uh, vibrating model is effective for falling control, but it is difficult to scale up. And uh, another thing is that the falling can be well managed by using smart design of membrane model in a pro pressure driven process via tilted panel or fin spacer model system. Um, and then we can actually optimize the energy consumption through uh, systematic optimization of operational parameters. Uh, and uh, as I link you to, to some of uh, my report, my, my, my journal publication, the system works very well with many different feeds, uh, which uh, confirm its uh, effectiveness. Uh, with that, I end my presentation. Uh, you can, uh, in the first slide, you get my contact, you get my personal website, so you can contact me after this one. Thank you for the opportunity, and uh, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to talk in this nice conference. <laughs>